What a beautiful daily word. I read that this morning and I thought a lot about my, my message. So my beloveds, I'm really one that likes to bring up the outside world. But what happened recently has weighed on my heart and my mind. So happy Black History Month. Yes. And like many of you know, being a metaphysician, I tend to look at the symbolism behind all things. And recently, Spirit kind of downloaded to me that our, our holidays are time for us to collectively deduce and receive a higher message. So Black History Month applies to everyone on the planet, if they tune into it, and it's about overcoming. When I think about my Haitian ancestors that liberated Haiti from the French in 1804, who fought the French, the British, and the Spaniards for 10 years, about 12 years, uneducated, slaves who came from many parts of Africa. My ancestors and these spiritual ancestors of the world were willing to overcome their circumstances, no matter what. And so that's what we are focusing on. They overcame their circumstances and they tuned into God's happiness. Many, my ancestors haven't been the only one. Many of you have ancestors and relatives and stories that you've heard of people who have overcome harrowing circumstances by maintaining a deep connection to God's happiness. They made God their happy place and they transcended. So when I heard about what happened to Tyree Nichols, may he rest in God's highest heaven, and I know he is in God's happiness and perfect peace. And may his family, his mother, be comforted forever so that she knows that she can go on until her very breath with God giving her strength and her finding happiness in this now moment, regardless of this loss. So when this happened, I thought we collectively are being tested. We are in our fourth year of, third year, fourth year of a pandemic crisis that occurred on the planet. We were anchored in our homes. You know, I like numerology. 2020 was the number 40. Were we willing to go through the desert to come out to the other side? Was God going to be our nourishment? Was God going to be our home? We were challenged. Four also represents the body. So we were challenged physically with the appearance of this disease. And I want to remind you that I did the numerology for COVID-19. It reduces to a nine. A nine means we must awaken. Nine is the most spiritual number. It represents completion. And COVID-19, the numbers and the word add up to nine. So we were called to a collective awakening if we choose. The choice is always ours. In 2021, we went through catastrophic, cataclysmic change, number five. That was the universal number. These numbers reduce to a single digit, and that digit becomes the universal number for the year. So regardless of what we are all going through, all eight, they're saying there are almost eight uh, billion of us on the planet, this is the collective theme, and it will show up in your life. 
So last year, 2022, we had three repeating twos in the number. The message was keep the faith. When you see two, 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 it means keep the faith, hold on, rise into your spiritual power. 22 is also the number of mastery. How will you master certain areas of your life? You're being called to mastery. 222 two, two reduces to six. We had to, we came back into relationship. We came back into community. We began to see our loved ones. We began to interact with each other. As a nation, we became divided in the universal year of the five. How were we going to come together? What is this relationship going to look like? And in this 2023 universal year, it reduces to a seven. So we are being called to get quiet and to value everything that is spiritual. We are being called to awaken. So of course, the international headlines and our national headlines were all informing the world that this young man had passed from this planet very brutally. And as I looked at the story and I watched part of the video, I can't take much of this violence. I thought, wow, it's so tempting. It's so easy to get stuck in the story that this planet is a planet of darkness, of violence, of oppression, of power hungry people who can't get enough of that it's so brutal and it's so sad and what is wrong with us? And then I thought, I can't, we can't because we know a higher truth. We can practice a higher truth. And God was like, you can always be happy no matter what is happening on this planet. And I said, really? <laughs> really? I can be happy with all this stuff? It seems like it's going from bad to worse. How can I be happy? And Spirit said, it is a choice. The vibration of happiness that I have woven into the fabric of the universe is always present. It is a stream of consciousness that you can tune into by turning within. Stop paying so much attention to how people are dying and the violence and the oppression and the un this apparent unjust system. It's a play. It's a story. Will you step out of character? Or will you become the reality that you are simply a woman, an immigrant, a black woman? Is that all you want to be? Limited? Or will you step into the stream of higher consciousness where you are a ageless, timeless, being that can step into multiple dimensions if you choose. But first, you must be happy and get happy no matter what. So you know I love the Bible and here at Unity we interpret the Bible metaphysically. That means that we know that it is a sacred tale a sacred story, and that there are mystical and esoteric messages if we will look deeper. In Adam, we see the beginning, the birth of the divine being, the male and the masculine, the feminine and the masculine are one. One living being with two aspects, this masculine and feminine are within all of us. 
And then every character, every situation, every trial and tribulation that that divine being goes through is an aspect of us. And then we awaken to the I am presence in the resurrection of Christ. We can do the same thing, or we can stay in the tomb of despair. This world has a broadcast of fear. And it wants you to stay in the tomb of despair. When I saw this young man being murdered, I began to think that we were just our bodies. And then I realized he's free. He's free. He's more than okay. He's glorious. He's shining in the divine light of spirit. He has messages for us. And those of us who are clairvoyant, clairaudient, and mediums can tune into what he has to say. I believe that he's a divine spiritual teacher that is called a divine appointment. He is teaching us something if we can choose to look beyond the gruesomeness of that experience. So in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 12 through 13, it says, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all, or in find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. To find satisfaction in all of our toil. I don't know about you, my beloveds, but I know I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing such negativity. I'm tired of our collective suffering and individual suffering. And yet, Ecclesiastes tells us that we can find happiness in all of our toil and that this is the gift from God, that we can find happiness in these shadow lands. I'm calling it the land of shadows because the light is very bright and the shadows are very dark right now. Stay focused on the light. That day when I saw the video of Tyree Nichols, I went outside and I looked up at the sky and the sun was shining and the birds, I didn't know what happened that week, but the, ver the bird birds got the memo to just all come out and talk to each other. So my, sing, my street, the birds were singing everywhere. And I had to remind myself that I can tune into a divine at any moment. Whoso trusted in the Lord is happy. This is from Proverbs. Whoso trusted in the Lord is happy. From Proverbs. So, from Psalm 37, seek your happiness in the Lord. He will give you your heart's desire. So for us as New Thought Truth students, many of us desire peace, dis we desire health and wholeness, divine right relationships and prosperity, and sometimes it doesn't feel like it's coming. Sometimes all of our positive affirmations for peace on the planet and peace in our lives and every good thing can feel very, the manifestation of this good can feel very far off. So how do we tune into God's happiness when we're feeling disappointed? Well, it's because there are several types of happiness. There is relative happiness, and relative happiness is based on the body, the mind, and the heart. The lowest level of relative happiness is allowing yourself to become addicted to your senses, where there is a fixation on the material, whether that's sexual, whether that's financial, 
you're just at that level of upset about the bills or fear and despair about the body. That is the body level of relative happiness. It's, it's hard transcending because it's about the five senses. In the body aspect of relative happiness, maybe you're homeless, maybe you know, you're having instability around your, the word in French is domicile, around your home. So it can feel very, very challenging because you're fixated there. In the mind happiness, this is when you are a good worker and you do everything that you can to be a good individual. You're a good parent, you're a good professional, you get to work on time, you stop at the stoplights when the light is red. That's at the mind. And you're generally happy. You try not to sweat the small stuff. That's the relative level of mind happiness. Then there's the heart level of relative happiness, where you want to be a good person, and maybe you believe in sin, and so you ask for forgiveness, and you try to do it right. That is the body, mind, and heart level of relative happiness. And then there is spiritual happiness. And spiritual happiness is when you begin to embody the principles of God. Your body becomes the body of God. When you walk into a room, you shift the vibration. And you shift the vibration wherever you are. Because now you are practicing. You are practicing meditation. You are a student of truth. You are learning to think a new thought. You realize that life and death are in the power of the tongue. So you mind your mind and you mind your spiritual business. You know what you say and what you think creates reality and can hinder or bless someone. You become awakened. You fall asleep and you wake up to the God presence within you. And no matter what happens, even though you walk through the valley of the shadows, you do not fear because you know that God is with you. That is spiritual happiness. So, so as you all know, without God, my life, Martine's life, is a mess. <laughs> I spent many years not awakening. I spent many years being in mental relative happiness, confused by my thinking, trying to be a good person, getting in my own way. Until I began to walk my talk and to apply these principles on a daily basis. When I began to affirm my good and to see beyond my circumstances, I became happier. And what I found was that many things in my life didn't change. I didn't suddenly have Oprah Winfrey's money and bank account. I've been to Montecito. Oh, that was glorious. Being on that beach and being in that neighborhood. Oh, gorgeous. Seeing our house from afar through the shrubs. <laughs> but that didn't happen. I didn't suddenly get taller and thinner. I stayed the same. I, my dreams didn't come true necessarily. I'm not happily married to my handsome, strong husband who's worth millions. That didn't happen either. But I began to become happier. Why? Because I tuned into something more. I knew I wasn't my problems. I knew that I wasn't the changing amount in my bank account. I knew that I wasn't simply a black woman of Haitian descent. 
I knew that I was more. And I began to tune into that and happiness came. And I can honestly say, most of my days are very happy because I meditate. And whenever I find myself getting into my story, because in the world, I should really be a victim. I'm black, I'm an immigrant, and I'm a woman. Apparently, I'm at the bottom of the pyramid. I don't even feel that way. I feel like I'm at the top, God's pyramid. So I didn't allow myself to be fixated on what the world said about me, what the world said about my circumstances, or what I said about me, and what I said about my circumstances. So as I began to tune into God, my life began to change. And the primary thing that has changed my life the most, that has rewired my neural pathways, has been meditation. Five minutes a day, and I began to change from the inside out. So my beloveds, my message today is not deny the reality of what happened to this looks like beautiful soul, Tyree Nichols, or any of the realities. We don't deny reality, but we know the truth. The truth is that no matter what happened to Tyree on that horrible evening, he is an unlimited soul flying in the omniverse with God, multidimensional, ageless, strong in power, beauty, wisdom. He is free. And so when we look at the story of suffering, oppression, this narrative of fear, let's rise above. Let's choose happiness no matter what. Have gratitude, stay in your practices, prayer, goodwill towards all, and also be objective. Put, put some distance between you and the narrative, between you and the news. Pull back. Don't always have an opinion. Step out of the fray. Step out of the continual argument. It's okay to be outside, to be an outliner, outlier. Do that, and that will also protect you. The rose that I had you envision, I did a meditation a year ago, and the angelic beings that were coming through this healer said that you can put a protect that if you place a rose on your aura, it will shield you from any world negativity getting in. So if you're in a place where there's discord or you're worried about driving at a particular type of time of night or whatever's going on on the planet, imagine yourself in a tube of golden light with a rose at the top. And that will seal you, and you will just receive divine love. So my beloveds, let's choose to be happy. Unconditional happiness is a practice. Ah, for God is good all the time. Sending the vibration of peace, love, health, wholeness, and every good thing. Happiness is spiritual technology. Let's use it. Let's tune into it. And so it is. Amen.